morning is taken from the book of James, James chapter 2, starting from verse 1. James chapter 2, verse 1. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonoured the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in Scripture, love your neighbour as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. This is God's word. Thank you for it, Lord. When I was working, um, I was at one stage um, working for BT. I was managing a call centre in Brighton. And one of the things that happened was it was a a call centre in the centre of Brighton. And we we had quite a a turnover in staff. So we had people joining and people leaving. And sometimes um, we were asked, to recruit a lot of people in a short period of time. And sometimes we, we had to be very creative in how we, we, we recruited people. So we'd do things like going down to the job centre and, um, and meeting people there and interviewing people there. We also went out to the universities and, and the colleges and, and interviewed people there for jobs. And um, we had trainers and a training room set up ready to train these people and I remember one particular morning in particular where um, we've got a new group of recruits coming in and um, they were all due in and the trainer was there to train them and, and the trainer this lady she came out of the room and she said I can't do this she said I am not going to train them what a waste of time what a waste of effort this is going to be. That it's, it's just useless, she said. Um, that it, it's just completely, absolutely, no, she used other words as well, but I won't use them. But what she said was that, that she didn't see the point of training these people. And I said, what, what's wrong? What's the problem? And she said, you go in there and have a look. I said, well, just tell me. She said, no, you go in there and have a look. Right, so I, um, as the um, 
the, the call centre manager went in and introduced myself to them. And what I saw was a group of students, 12 students, sitting there with T-shirts with big slogans on and jeans and long hair and short hair and coloured hair. And there was two particular um, people in that room, a, a, a man and a woman, um, who were obviously students who stood out because they had piercings everywhere. Not one or two, all right? but they had a rows of piercings around their eyebrows, around their lips, up their noses, around their ears. They had piercings. If, 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 it, if it flapped, they had a piercing in it. All right? I, I'm not going anywhere else. All right? I'm just talking about their faces. Okay? But, but, you know, they had piercings through their... Oh, everywhere. And, and I thought, well, how are we going to teach them? And, and I introduced myself to them, and I told them that if they really didn't want to be there, and if, you know, I, I said, you know, don't waste our time. And I'm thinking, I wonder if they'll get out and walk out. I said, if, if you really don't want to be here and you really don't want to work for our company and all of this, um, then, you know, you can just walk out and... Um, and they didn't, and they stayed. And I thought, that's a shame. Um, um, but um, I went back out, and I spoke to the trainer and said, look, give it a go, see what you can do. See, see if, you can, if you can, you know, get something out of them. I said, they, they've come in, they're, they're, they want the job. You know, I've, I've done my best to get them to go, and they won't. <laughs> All right? And she said, well, I'll give it a go. But she said, you know, we'll be recruiting another lot next week because they won't stay. And she went in. And she trained them. I could cut a long story short because within um, six months, these two people had completed their degrees. They both applied as graduate recruits to BT and been given jobs working um, in senior positions and management positions to start in BT. And while they were there, the job they did was fantastic. That group in that training was some of the best people that we'd ever taken on. They were some of the, the best people. They were, um, they were there on time. They did their job well. Um, and we didn't have any problems with them at all. What I did at the end of their training, I went back in and said to them, look, um, I just need to apologise to you. I said, because we thought that you were going to be trouble. We thought that you weren't going to even do your training. All right? When you came in and I first saw you and, and saw what you looked like, I judged you and I've been wrong. You've done your training really well. You're ready to go out. And they went out and they did a good job. Why am I telling you this? Because, because we tend, we, te we, we, we do, we judge people. We look at people and we make judgments. We look at people and we, we look at, you know, whether it's their, 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 their colour, whether it's their, their manner, whether it's whatever it is, we make judgments about people all of the time. The reason why I love that we've got Peter and Liz here talking about good news for everyone this morning is because it is good news for everyone. And as James said here, um, and as it's titled in my Bible, favoritism is forbidden. We cannot have favorites in God's kingdom. We cannot say this word is for one person but not for another. We can't say, I'm going to take this word and I'm only going to go to people that I like. We, we need to make sure it's for everyone. Um, several years ago, there was um, a, an American Airlines ticket office in Fort Worth, Texas, was picketed by a group of people. This is back in the 1970s. And they were picketed by a group of people called Uglies United. They called themselves Uglies United. 
Um, and they were upset because the airline specifically advertised for good-looking people when they were um, looking for people and hiring people. They said they only wanted good-looking people. Well, we can we know why, don't we? You know, we we you know they want good-looking people. They they want you know on their aeroplanes they want people that look good and and help their image and yeah. And pe more people are going to fly with them if they've got good-looking air stewardesses and, and things like that. And they advertised for good-looking people. And there were other companies also that were running ads for attractive receptionists and pretty secretaries. And so this group, Uglies United, were formed. Oh, it only lasted for about a year. But you see the point that um, sometimes we, 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 we show favoritism to people because of what we look like and, and, and all of those things. And in this story that we just read from James in the Bible, James gives us an example. He says, suppose them. Somebody walked into church wearing fine clothes. They grew up in a, um, a smart car and, and they're obviously rich and got plenty of money. They said, you know, he says, do you show them to a place of honour? Do you bring them in? In the example that James gives here, this person is brought in by the usher and he's given a good seat. He's actually also given a footrest to put his feet on. Yeah, a place of honour in, in the church and everyone's really pleased that this rich man has come and he says, then a poor man comes in. And, and this poor man, um, obviously he's poor, so he's got probably um, old clothes on and you can tell that he's poor and he's probably a bit smelly or uh, whatever, I don't know. But this poor man comes in. And he, he, in James' example, this poor man is, is asked to sit or to stand at the back, or sit on the floor. And in, in, if we were to look up the actual meaning of what this um, text originally meant, is that this poor man was asked to sit by this rich man's feet, by his footstool. Now James says that this is obviously discrimination. It's discriminating against the poor man and giving the, the rich man honour. You know, it must have been awkward. Just think about the situation, though. If a, a really rich man walked into the church now, we'd want to, you know, welcome them and, 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 and you know, be really pleased. It'd be good if a rich man came in and, you know, gave us some money, wouldn't it? And, you know, we'd, we'd like that. You know, there's something in that that I, I need to say, and that is that that's not what we should be want, looking for. We should be looking for God to provide all that we need because he does in amazing ways. God is richer than the richest person. Um, um, but the point that, that James is making, and he makes it, really well, I think, with, with this example, is that when we start um, saying that one person receives greater honour or is better than another, then actually we're breaking God's law. We are, we are saying that one person is better in our sight, which we're saying is they're better in God's sight. And to say that anybody is better than anybody else, is actually contrary to all that God stands for and says. We are all created equal. It says in Deuteronomy um, chapter 10, verse 17, for the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords.
great God, mighty and awesome, he shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. He defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. And you are to love those who are foreigners, for you yourselves are foreigners, were foreigners in Egypt. God is telling us here in his word that he has no partiality, no favoritism at all. And Acts 10, 34, um, verse 34 says, God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation. And as we read through Acts chapter 10, we come to a great story of Cornelius and Peter. Now, I don't know if you know this story, but it, I think it's one of the, the, the greatest and most important stories in the book of Acts and in, in the New Testament because this story is how Peter and the, the Christians, the Jewish Christians, come to believe that the Bible, that the Word of God, and that Jesus died for everyone, Jew and Gentile. You see, Cornelius was um, a centurion, a Roman centurion, known as the, in the, he was the centurion in charge of the Italian residents. And his, he and his family were devout and God-fearing, it tells us. And um, Cornelius had a vision. And in that vision, he was told to send for Peter and get Peter to come to his house. Um, if you want to read this, you can read it in Acts chapter 10. I'm, I'm just shortening it a lot because of, of time this morning, but it's a great story. In the meantime, while Cornelius, this Roman centurion, is, is being told to send for Peter. Peter is at the house of a friend of his, um, Simon the Tanner, and, and Peter's feeling hungry, and he's, um, th they're preparing for him, and Peter goes up on the roof to pray while the food's being prepared for him. And we're told that Peter, while he's there on the roof, falls into a trance. And he has a vision, a vision from, from heaven. And he sees this sheet coming down from heaven. And on this sheet are animals of all kinds, animals that Jews um, would never eat because they believe that God has told them that they should not eat um, certain animals and things. And, and, and in this vision, Peter is told by God to get up and go and eat. Take what he wants and eat. And Peter says, I've never eaten this food in my life and I can never do it. And God said, what I have called holy, what I have provided, you, you can eat. Do not call anything that I call pure, unpure. And so Peter has this vision three times. And then when he wakes up, the servants of Cornelius are at his gate saying, Cornelius has sent for you. And Peter goes with them. He's a Jew. It would have been against the Jewish law for him to enter into um, a, a, the, the house of Cornelius. It would have been against their tradition and religion for him to do that. It would have made him unclean, but he went, and he went in, and he said, I'm here because God told me to come. And he was able to tell Cornelius about all that Jesus had done for them in going to that cross. And Cornelius and his family gave their lives to Jesus and trusted him. But Peter went away and said, God has proven that this message is not just for Jews, but it's for everyone. 
this good news that he's providing is for everyone. And that's still true today, you know. The truth today is that we all, some, well, no, we, we can't help it. We, 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 we have friends and, and people that we like and people that we don't like. But the truth is that we are called um, to love everyone. We are called to love everyone as our neighbour. We are called to be that picture of God for all those that we meet. We are called not to show discrimination or to have favourites in terms of who we share the gospel with. Someone was asked to go and share their, the message to their neighbours. And they said, I don't like my neighbours. I don't want to share my church with them, so I'm not going. We cannot have favourites like that. And when we show any form of favouritism, when we start deciding who should receive God's word, then we start ignoring the grace of God. You see, God's word teaches us that the standard is not our opinion. The standard that we should be living our lives is not down to us. The standard that we should be looking for is the cross. We should be looking to what Jesus did. Jesus did not go to that cross just for a group of people or for some people. When Jesus died on that cross, he did it for each one of us. He did it for everyone so that we could all know forgiveness of our sins so that we can all come into that relationship with God. I, I came across this poem, um, and I'll just finish with this. It says this, What's a man worth? Does anyone know? Is he measured by riches, by friend or foe? Can you tell by his birth station in life, his accent, his colour, his peace or his strife, the length of his hair, the shape of his nose, his smile or his handshake, the cut of his clothes. What's a man worth? We turn to our guide and Christ gives his answer. For each man I die. So James tells us that it's wrong to show favouritism because to do so is contrary to the character of God. In doing so, it's breaking the law of God and it ignores his amazing grace, which is for everyone. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that it teaches us. And sometimes, Lord, we need to admit that we have favourites, we have people and things that we like and do, and things that we'd rather not like and do, and people that we'd perhaps not like to meet. But, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that your word, your love, that Jesus died for everyone. Help us, Lord to show no favouritism, but to share your love, to share your good news in all that we do. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.